John Lash is a sharp young guy, uh, <laughs> 24 years of age and uh, getting older every day like we all yes, are, sir. John, uh, from Florida, uh, who is a musician and also uh, doing some interesting work around the world. Welcome, John. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. Before we get into anything, you, you were saying something to me uh, off air. Uh, you're, you're, you're a young musician, you have a heart for social justice, and mm -hmm. uh, you're taking Haiti personally. I really am. Um, we were speaking before and I said that it's this morning I was in the shower and just kind of talking with God and I was like, man, Lord, I have a lot of friends who are Haitian from Florida um, who literally this isn't just a news story for them. This is a reality. They haven't spoken with their grandmothers or their uncle and aunts. And, and so I'm feeling it more than just it's something I read about. And so I was just like, Lord, what I think it's so easy for us to think about, oh, wow, it's great. The Red Cross is doing this and this organization is doing that. And to skip the fact of, OK, Lord, as your disciple, as your follower, like, what do you want me to do? Like, what do you want my wallet? to mm -hmm. be doing about this issue. What do you want my feet? What do you want my hands? And So I'm just wrestling. At yeah. this point, I'm just wrestling. I'm like, Lord, as your disciple, you care about hurting people. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Yeah. So. You know, in response to that question, and I'm sure a lot of viewers are asking that question, uh, there's a few logistical things you have to keep in mind. Right now, you have one airstrip, basically, right. that is slightly damaged, and it is uh, uh, underpowered electronically. Mm -hmm. uh, pilots are landing with visual flight rules because they don't have proper radio contact right. and there's not proper uh, uh, air control. Um, and so there's a bit of a bottleneck there right now. Mm -hmm. and, and the harbor's starting to f fill up with ships. Uh, there's a problem with tenders, getting them back and forth to, to the shore. Uh, and so I, I, I would really suggest to anybody who's asking the same question John is asking, uh, try to uh, connect with the Christian ministries that are already there, yeah. you know, uh, that already have access, that already have some kind of infrastructure. Uh, in terms of just picking up and going yourself, you might just add to the confusion because right. as many people as are arriving, there's just 10 times as many trying to get out, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of Americans try, trying to get out. Uh, so it, it's it's going to, and I think to keep in mind, John, it's going to be a long-term thing. Yeah, uh, it could very well be a year from now. We're still going to be involved in some kind of support of Haiti. Let's shift. You've got an interesting story, <laughs> really interesting story. I mean, you're you're just a young guy. You're you're doing work uh, around the world. You're a musician. Uh, you're based in Florida. Yep. Uh, how did it all begin for you? Which part? <laughs> well, just just this business of, of being a, a young man of faith, of of, oh, of having vision for the world. Uh, uh, normally, you know, at 24, you know, kids may be still in, it, in school or they may yeah. not be really thinking about the big picture. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why are you so, so engaged? The grace of God. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's an answer that you'll get a lot of times, but it really is the truth. Uh, grew up in a home where my family, I mean, my parents are amazing and really modeled the gospel and the kingdom life for me. And I was about 17 when I was just like, ah, I think, no, probably about 15 when I was just like, ah, I've had it. That's my parents' thing. They're older. They don't get it. And so just kind of went off into drinking and smoking and drugs and, and dabbled in little drug dealing. I would do things here and there. And I mean, just, I was just a mess. Just kind of went off and was the prodigal son. Um, and God really, basically I ran my life into the ground in all, in all honesty, kind of ran my life into the ground. The summer before my senior year of high school um, was dating this girl and that kind of went south. And, and so my life just quickly collapsed. Well, I came to a point where that, I, I say God set me up that, uh, it was a Saturday night, I got a phone call from this girl that I was dating. And at that point, that was my Jesus. That was my life. And so I got a call from her, and we were talking back and forth and found out through a couple of friends. I had some information and talked with her and found out that she had cheated on me with some guy. And that just kind of, it broke me. And uh, my friend called me up that night, which is why I said God set me up and said, Hey, John, what's going on? You want to come to church? And I didn't want anything to do with him. I hung up the phone probably a few times, and he kept persisting. So if you've got a friend who doesn't know God, keep persisting. Mm. Wouldn't give up on me. So finally I decided to go just because. And uh, the, the church service was all about physical healing, which for a young guy whose life is messed up, that's the least thing. But just at the end of the service, I just got up and walked up front. It's almost like God was like, son, you've been running for long enough. And, uh, and just dealt for the first time in my life, just dealt honestly with God. I had gotten saved about 30 times growing up, prayed these prayers, and, mm -hmm. but really said, Jesus, if you're really who everyone says you are, my life's a wreck, so if you can use it, you got me. And uh, it began a journey that has been an adventure. And you, you sure. mentioned in your, in your bio that um, when this happened, you, you, your, your party animal uh, self kind of fell away, but you also uh, lost a lot of friends. Yeah. And you were, pretty, you were a pr pretty lonely guy, in fact, you. You, you said it's, it's a lie when people tell you come to Jesus and everything's going to be okay. You come to Jesus and your life gets wrecked. I, I guess it's true. That's a reality. If people would ask me, and I just get frustrated sometimes to hear the gospel being preached and you, the gospel here is come and everything will be great. And the reality is that's it. I came to Jesus and he wrecked my life 
the way it was, only to put it back together better than it ever. The point being been. that it puts you back together, mm -hmm. exactly. But it's quite a thing to have a wrecked life by the time you're 18. Yeah. Mean, you, 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 <laughs> you must have been very proficient at ruining things. Yeah, I was, I was pretty well, good at it, apparently. No, your parents, your parents are, 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 are believers. They, they've got a ministry. Yeah. Uh, what, how did they deal with you during this period of rebellion? Honestly, they didn't know much. No. Um, I lied and I was good at it. And so they had some sort of an inkling of what was going on. And my mom, I'm convinced that the only reason I'm here today, I had a couple of run-ins um, with the law where I really should, probably should be in jail right now. And I'm convinced the only reason I'm here is because the grace of God, number one, and number two, my mother was praying a lot. Um, and so to the extent that they knew, they, they tried to work with me and they did everything they could. But a lot of it, I just kind of sin hides, stays in the darkness. Mm. Um, but now they're thrilled. I mean, I talked to my parents and they're, they're excited that... I'm serving the Lord. So. Now, all of this energy that you were using self-destructively, yeah, uh, you still have the energy, right? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> you still have the energy, obviously. I got it. But but now now you're now you're directing it in a constructive way. Tell me about uh, John Lash post uh, uh, renewal, post uh, true conversion. Oh, I love it. So I'll give you a little snapshot. Yeah. My friends, um, obviously, I had a lot of friends that were not living for God by any stretch of the imagination. And so a little while after, initially, they were like, oh, he'll come back. And then when they realized I wouldn't, they said, oh. so I had a friend call me when I was at the University of Florida up in Gainesville one time for the Gators. Go Gators. Go Gators. <laughs> uh, go Gators. Hey, so I had a friend call me that said, oh, so, I, so you stopped partying now? And I was like, wait a second. I haven't stopped partying at all. If anything, I party better now than I did before, and I don't need drinking, and I don't need drugs, and I don't need any of the stuff I did before because I've got joy, and that's the reality. I mean, we've, I got to be a part of a community in Gainesville where we would have parties. No one's drinking. No one's doing drugs. We'd have dancing, but it would all be clean. But we would have keg parties downstairs where people would be leaving keg parties coming up because there was joy and the intangible they couldn't find mm. upstairs. So if anything, when I talk to people, I'm like, listen, Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. If there's anyone who should be having the parties where there's life, it should be followers and disciples of Jesus. Mm. So that's my story. If anything, I feel like the, the wildness in me has increased as I've gotten in touch with God and who he's made me to be. And there's just joy there that I was searching for before and could never find. Now, tell me about uh, the music. How, how, how did this enter into the equation? That's a great question. Yeah. It was a joke. <laughs> it really? was a joke, this whole thing. I, I began writing songs shortly after really surrendering my life to Jesus. Um, and making the decision to follow him. I, I, I began writing songs. I'd play the guitar for a little while. And so it was just kind of a personal thing. I would write these songs and some of my friends were like, John, we love your music. You should play somewhere. And I was like, I don't want to play anywhere. And they were like, you should. And so jokingly to two of my friends, Jesse and Priscilla, I said, if you guys are my managers, I'll go play music. And so they took me up on it, those jokers. And they went and started calling people around Gainesville. Well, what started out as a joke turned into eight months of playing at least a concert a week. Mm. Um, got to go on tour with two Christian rappers down in South Florida and have all sorts of wild experiences with them. Gotten to play everywhere from bars to clubs to temples to churches to art gallery openings to Black History Month talent shows. I mean, all over the place. And initially, when it first started, I was very, I was like, God, I'm not trying to be a rock star. I don't want to do this. And he was just very clearly, son, get over yourself <laughs> and do what I want you to do. And uh, just started walking through it. So I'm, I still don't even know what this, what this is all about, but I'm just being obedient and enjoying the adventure. And at some point it'll stop and then I'll say, all right, what's next, Lord? Mm. Uh, just a minute before I send you off to do some music sure. for us. Uh, you, you've, uh, you've got an interest in, uh, in, in clean water for, uh, yes. for Africa. Yes. Tell me about, a bit about that. It all kind of began, um, I had been doing music for a while and I played a concert in Georgia. Um, to make a long story short, God spoke to me there and said, hey, I want you to come out with a CD. And so I was like, all right, I'll come out with a CD. The next day I had a friend come up to me and say, I'd love to record your stuff. I do it for free. So I said, okay, you can do that. Um, so I got it recorded for free. Then I got it mixed for free. Then I got it mastered for free. Then my parents were like, well, we'll help you produce it. The whole entire album, the first one, got done for free. To the extent I was like, all right, Lord, Whoa. what do you want me to do with it? Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and I was working with a youth group at the time, and I felt like God said, give all the money away. Okay, I'll give all the money away. And so we were partnering, the youth group I was helping out in leading worship was partnering with an organization to build um, wells in Africa for clean water, an organization called Speed the Light. And so I just well, started giving well, all the money there. You there. Go. While you're speeding the light, why don't you speed over to the set you and give us a song, John. And I'll tell you, friends, it's uh, terrifically uh, inspiring to, to see the enthusiasm and the uh, commitment there is on the part of um, young believers uh, all around the world. You know, as, as I travel around doing a lot of speaking, doing a lot of work in Africa myself, uh, I'm so encouraged by young adults 
who get it, who understand that it's important to confess their faith in, in the Lord, but also to practice their faith in terms of reaching out to the broken.